Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. You may not slander everyone even if he's wrong. No one has given you the right to be the judge. There's one judge, and that's God Almighty. Who has pointed you as judge? Who has appointed any man as a judge? God is the judge. Amen? No one has to be slaughtered. Not even the people who do bad. No amount of criticism and slander is going to save the lives of people, but rather an attitude of grace, want to bring them in and get them free. That is the attitude of love, salvation, grace, and mercy. In the name of Jesus. So sometimes you hear me, I rebuke sin. But I tell you, in my heart, there's a great love for the person. Although I can rebuke the sin, I love the person, and I want the person to be saved in Jesus' name. Say to God, no one is to be thrown away. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the book of Corinthians says, who appointed you judge? Do you not know that we all we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ? God is the judge. When a man judge, he put himself in a position of God, doing exactly the same thing that Satan has done. Therefore, Jesus said, do not judge. With the same measure you judge, you'll be judged. But don't tolerate sin in your life or the others. But you're not the judge of your neighbor. Okay? Say to God, you're not your neighbor's judge. You pray rather for grace and mercy, saving grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Say to God, is to grow up in your salvation. Know that now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Amen. Say to God, is to grow up in your salvation. Know that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Amen. As you come to Him, verse 4, as you come to Him, the living stone. Say, a living stone. As you come to Him, the living stone. Say, the living stone. Rejected by men, but chosen by God. He was rejected by men, rejected by the Jewish nation. To whom He came, He was rejected by them. But chosen by God. Many times the things that people reject is chosen by God. I mean, like all the prophets in the Old Testament, almost all of them died by the hands of their own people. The nation of God, which was Israel, by the hands of the nation of God, the prophets of God died. They killed their own prophets. Now, I don't condemn Israel. Let's pray for, for, for them for grace. Say, Lord Jesus... We pray for them for grace. We will not judge them in the name of Jesus. Amen? Okay? Now, many times things that are chosen by God is rejected by men. And if God accepts them, they are rejected by God. Hallelujah? Rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to Him. You also, like living stones. Say to God, He's to you also. Say, Jesus is that living stone. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Say, not any spiritual sacrifice, but one that is acceptable to God. Many people today bring many spiritual sacrifices. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What sacrifice is acceptable by God? Obedience only. Give him hand. God doesn't want all sorts of sacrifices from you. The one that's acceptable to him is your obedience to his word, not to your opinion. To his word. What sacrifices is acceptable in God's eyes? Not any spiritual sacrifice, but one that is obedient to his word. 
Say obedience to his word. Hallelujah. Offering spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. There's many spiritual sacrifices, but not in everyone is acceptable to God. Say obedience to God's word is acceptable. Okay, bringing sex, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Say Jesus is the only way. So people are deceived if they think, oh, Israel is also worshipping the Lord, the Jews. No Jew can worship God without Jesus. It is impossible. Oh, but you know what? The Islam people, they're also very serious for God. No one got no any clue about who God is if he does not know Jesus. Oh, brother, there's some of Jehovah Witnesses, they said they're very serious for Jesus. They reject the Son, they reject, the, they, they, they reject God. They do not know who He is. But pastor, they're good people. Good people don't go to Him. Many good people have been found later on to be serial killers. But everyone around them thought they were very good people. Their colleagues that work with them think they are very good people, loving, caring people. They love even the animals, but they kill other people at night. Do not be deceived by what you see with your eyes. If you work for me and you make nonsense, you find that in your viewpoint, maybe I'm not a good man. Because I don't take nonsense. But you don't, my heart is after God. I mean, see, sometimes I think of Clive has second thoughts. This pastor. But today he's loving me. I mean, that Clive. Say through, through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen, chosen and precious cornerstone. Say, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. Say to the good person next to you, the one who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. In Jesus' name. If you trust in Him, you trust in His Word. Because Him and His Word is one. Don't say you know Jesus, but you don't obey His Word. You're a liar. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I obey Jesus. Where did you get what you obey? If it's not in God's word, you're obeying nonsense. You obey God's word. God's word is your standard. God does nothing without his word. He does nothing without his church. Because he said, I will build my church. Oh, pastor, I don't belong to a church. Then you don't belong to Christ. Because he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. And I'm the head of the church which is my body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the boldest rejected has become the capstone. Say the capstone meaning the important one, and a stone that causes men to stumble. This stone causes many men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey. They disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, said the Ghanis, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may proclaim and declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful, powerful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you, as aliens and strangers in this world, say to God, if you're an alien, they speak about aliens on the TV. Who is alien? You are an alien. Give God that. <laughs> ah, amen. They speak about aliens. Say to God, you are that alien. Amen. 
Because you're born from above. You're not born from this earth. You're born from above. Your citizenship is not on this earth. It is in heaven. You are just passing through, man. Don't make this your home. Because if you make this place your home, you will be in trouble because the Bible says Satan is angry. And he come to destroy those on the earth to make, make the earth their home. This earth is not my home. It's not your home. You are passing through. You are here for training for the time being. I mean, you are born from above, from the seed, the heavenly seed from above. You are going back to above in the name of Jesus. So no matter what you suffer on this earth, no matter the little bit of difficulty you're going through here, Jesus is your guide. This Peter says, not Peter, but the Holy Spirit through Peter says, what you suffer here on earth cannot be compared to the surpassing greatness, the awesome glory that will be revealed to you at the end. Sometimes we go through difficult times, we think, ah, ah, cry, cry, feel sorry for ourselves. Say to God, he says, human nature. You feel sorry, ah, oh, this, this, this. The other day, one woman there, I don't know if she's here, she was there in the room, my wife prayed for her, and then I came to pray. We got it on DVD. Her spirit was in heaven. She was seeing. God took her eyes to heaven. Now, you don't know how it's working. You know, God can take your eyes to heaven and you can be here. Do you know that? Huh? He can take my hand. I can preach to you here. And someone can be sick in a house in Fauna Park. And he can take my hand to Fauna Park and lay my hand there on him. You see, if you try to work this out with your mind, you're going to go laugh and mad. On Sunday, I was ministering here. God took my spirit to a house for no park. I think it was for no park. I was preaching here to the people, but he took my spirit, part of my spirit there, to minister to a sick person in the house. And a sick person came back the, 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 that evening. She's here. She came back that evening and said, I'm healed. Thank you. You came to minister. I was preaching here. Spiritual things are not discerned by the mind of a human. I was praying that woman, God took her eyes on my behalf to see heaven. And then she spoke in a tongue. It sounded almost like Portuguese, but it was not Portuguese. She spoke. And she looked as she was describing the things in heaven because her eyes was not here, her eyes was in heaven. She could see everything there. She saw the angels and the glory and the power and everything. But God took her eyes to heaven to tell me something. And I was looking and I was waiting and seeing and knowing that God wanted to speak to me. And she spoke in tongues and I understood every word. And she looked at some point at me and she said, Pastor, do you understand what I say? I said, I know. God told me, said to me, Look what I have prepared for you. Look at the wonderful things that's waiting for you. Don't worry about the little things that you suffer on earth. They cannot compare to the glory that is waiting for you. Say to the person next to you, don't worry about little small things you suffer now. They are nothing comparing to the glory and the awesomeness that's waiting for us. Hallelujah. You are only passing in Jesus' name. Therefore, I tell you, for those who live in the Spirit, time is not a limitation. Distance is not a limitation. I can stand here in this church now, and part of my Spirit, not full, fully, part of my Spirit, can be in Funa Park in a house and ministering to a sick person that could not come to church. Give Jesus a hand. God can take my hand to a house. My spiritual hand to a house. Does he cut it off? It's not working like that. You don't understand. He's taking my hand there. Um, did I, I pray for you. Come here, tell the people. Where's the mic? The spiritual things, for those who live in the spirit, distance is not a limitation. I'll give the mic because you're going to maybe fall. Okay. Tell us, you haven't been in church that one Sunday morning. Which Sunday morning was that? Um, it 
was about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. So you remained at house because you were too sick. Yes. And then what happened? And when you prayed for, I understand you were praying for me. And suddenly I had a food poison. I went to a wedding and I ate something. Yes. So it was so terrible. Uh, I felt like something got out of my, my stomach. And I came Sunday evening. You prayed again for me. Uh. It was so wonderful. I got healed. Completely healed. Completely healed. So you had food poisoning. Was, you were completely healed. I was completely healed. So you felt God took the poison out. Yes. 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 Thank you. She was a Sunday morning in her house. She could not come to church because of food poison. I went. I was here ministering in church, but part of my spirit was ministering to her. Ministering healing and encouragement. And that night came and I ministered to her further on and she was completely healed. Give Jesus a hand.